Okay, and so of course that's going to be um, 6 times 4. Um, so I need the factors of minus 24 actually to add up to 2. So that's going to be 3x squared plus 6x minus 4x minus 8 is equal to 0. And of course you can factor this however you want to. Got a common factor of 3 and x that comes out leaves with x plus 2. In the second grouping I have a common factor of minus 4 that comes out leaves me with x plus 2. That's equal to 0. So this factors to 3x minus 4 times x plus 2 and that's equal to 0. Copy that and put it on the other page here. Okay, so in order to find the critical values, I need to set this equal to 0. So I need to know when is 3x equal to 4, or this tells me x is equal to 4 thirds. And the second factor here tells me that x is equal to 2. So I have critical values that x equals 4 thirds and x equals 2. So I'm going to now, once I've found my critical values, I'm going to use my sign line on my first derivative. And so I'm going to list the, first I'm going to draw the line. And I'm going to put on this line my critical values, which are 4 thirds and 2. Then I'm going to list my factors on the left over here, which are 3x minus 4 and x plus 2. And now I'm going to just pick a test value in all of the regions for each of these. So 4 thirds is where 3x, plus 3x minus 4 is 0, so it's 0 here. Pick any test value to the left of that, like 0. And 3 times 0 minus 4 is negative over here. Since 3x minus 4 is a linear factor, we know that it's going to be negative on one side of where it's 0 and then positive everywhere else. But you could certainly test values in each of those two regions. Now for the factor x plus 2, oh, and it looks like I've got this mixed up just a bit here, so let me go back and fix this, because that factor x plus 2 is actually 0 and minus 2, and you all probably saw that and wanted to scream at me in the video. So let me redo those, and let me just correct this. That should be minus 2, and so I should have minus 2 over here and 4 thirds over here just my algebra mistake. So I'm going to go back and put the 4 thirds in. So of course it's 0 at 4 thirds for the 3x minus 4 and then it's going to be negative to the left and positive to the right. So that didn't change. But x plus 2 is going to be 0 at minus 2. Plug in a value to the left of minus 2 like minus 5 and minus 5 plus 2 is negative. So it's negative on the left of minus 2 and then it will be positive everywhere to the right of minus 2. Okay, and so now I see the region between minus infinity and minus 2. I have two negative signs, so the derivative is positive here. In between minus 2 and 4 thirds, it's negative, and to the right of 4 thirds, it's positive. So now I can determine from this sign line where my function's increasing and decreasing because wherever the derivative is positive, it's increasing. So for example, in this region, increasing. In this region, decreasing. And then in this region, increasing again. So if I look at minus 2, I'm increasing on the left and decreasing on the right. So that means that that must be a local minimum. I'm sorry, local maximum. And then at 4 thirds, I'm decreasing on the left, going downhill, and then going uphill on the right. So that must be a local maximum. So I have now that I have a local min at x equals 4 thirds and a local max at x equals minus 2. Of course, if I wanted to find the local min and max, I just plug those in. And so that would mean at f of 4 thirds, whatever that value is, that is a local minimum. And f of minus 2 is the local maximum. Okay, so let me go back and see what that function was. I'll cut and paste that over there. And so now I know that at f of 4 thirds is a possibility for an absolute maximum. f of 
um, minus 2 is a possibility for absolute max or min. And then I also have to take the limit at the um, minus infinity and plus infinity because they've given me this function and they've really not given me an interval so that means that I'm supposed to be looking at this function on the interval from minus infinity to plus infinity. So I need to see what the function is doing at the endpoints because remember absolute extrema can occur at only the places where local extrema occur or at the endpoints of the function. All right, And think a little bit about how this problem would be just a little bit different if the interval I was looking at was a closed interval. Um, the extreme value theorem might apply then, but this is an open interval from minus infinity to plus infinity. And so for all local, uh, for all open intervals, I will need to take the limit at the endpoints. I'm going to take the limit of my function as x approaches infinity, and that's of x cubed plus x squared minus 8x plus 5. Of course, as a function goes to plus infinity, the only term I need to be concerned with is the largest power. And so if x is going to plus infinity, then that's going to go to infinity. And so since that limit goes to infinity, that means I do not have an absolute maximum because nothing could beat infinity. Similarly, I need to take the limit as x goes to minus infinity of the function x cubed plus x squared minus 8x plus 5. Again, we know from our limits that this is a polynomial going to minus infinity, so I only look at the highest power. And now as x goes to minus infinity, that would go to minus infinity because a negative number cubed is going to be negative. So that means I don't have a local minimum. So all I have are, you know, at four-thirds, I believe that was our local min. So this is a local min. And this is a local max, and there are no absolute extrema.